So let's look at some common respiratory tract infections and symptoms. We've taken a lot of this information from Dr. Edith Blundell Hill's presentation for the Alberta Health Do Bugs Need Drugs program, and it was adapted with permission. Now, one of the most common symptoms that we see, of course, is a fever. And fevers happen for all different reasons when there are infections in the body. And what they actually do is they help our body to fight infection. So fever can be a good thing because it's a sign that there's some kind of infection going on in our body. They do happen with most respiratory tract infections. And if you have a fever, it doesn't tell us whether you have a viral infection or a bacterial infection because they can come with both. It's actually a good thing for you because it's your body's way of fighting off infection. So how do you know if you have a fever? Well, normal body temperature in a healthy person is about 37 degrees Celsius if you're taking your temperature by mouth, or 36.5 if you're taking the temperature under the armpit of a child. So anything above that would count as a fever. So what can you do if you have a fever? We know that you don't want to be taking antibiotics if you don't need them, but there's lots of other things that you can do instead. One of the best things to do is to drink lots of fluids. So lots of things like water, juice, um, popsicles, because of course they melt when you suck on them, and ice cubes. I was asked once if alcohol counts as a fluid, and alcohol is not a good option if you have a fever, because it's not really going to help you at all. Another thing that you can do is take acetaminophen, and that would be your Tylenol or your Tempra. If your temperature is above about 37 or 36, 38 degrees pardon me, by armpit, or 38.5 by mouth, um, you never want to give aspirin to kids under the age of 18 because it causes lots of other problems, but in adults that's an option as well. And some adults choose to give um, Advil to their kids, Advil or Motrin, and really it's up to the parent. The reason in healthcare that we recommend acetaminophen or Tylenol is because it's been around longer and so there have been thousands of studies done on it and we know that it's very, very safe. Advil and Motrin are a newer drug and we're not saying that it's not a safe option, there's just less research on it. So really whatever the parent chooses to give is up to them. Um, another thing you can do for a fever is to dress lightly so that your body can cool down and really important if you have sick people that are in bed to decrease the amount of bedding that they have. Um, in the past people used to think that you wanted to load the bedding on and it would um, you know, make the fever go up so high that it would eventually break. And this is a really dangerous thing to do because if you put lots of clothes or lots of bedding on someone, then it increases their temperature even higher. And when your temperature goes really high, it can cause lots of other health problems. So you want to decrease the bedding. If people are in really thick pajamas, putting them in something lighter is a good option. Another thing that you can do is putting them in a bath with lukewarm water. So you don't want cold water and you don't want to give them an alcohol bath, which again is something people used to do back in the day. Um, cold water and alcohol are going to make someone shiver and when you shiver it makes your muscles work and it actually heats up your body even more. So lukewarm water is a good option. It'll lower the body temperature for a while, but it's something that you want to do after you've already given some medication for fever like the Tylenol or the Tempra because if you give someone a lukewarm bath once they get out and warm back up again, the fever is going to go right back up. Um, another thing you don't want to do is put people into a bath with ice. And again, this is something that happens in some places. Putting someone in an ice bath is really painful because their temperature drops so quickly that the body gets quite confused. And again, they're going to start shivering very, very quickly. So lukewarm water is good. Another thing is um, rinsing out face cloths in lukewarm water and putting it underneath the armpits and on the forehead. That helps to decrease body temperature. Now, sometimes when someone has a fever, it does get to a level where it's really important to take them into emergency, call the ambulance, or call the doctor and ask for advice. So when are you supposed to do this? Number one is if you've already given the acetaminophen or the Tylenol or Tempera and their temperature is not going down. So you've given the medication that you were supposed to, nothing's happening, you need to call in and find out what else to do. Um, of course, it's really important to give 15 minutes or half an hour for the medication to start working. You can't expect a 30 second um, cure, but if that time's gone by and it's not improving, then give your doctor a call. Another thing is if the temperature ever gets above about 39.5, pardon me, by armpit, so again in a baby, 
or above 40 degrees by mouth, then it means your temperature or your child's temperature is getting to a point where it is very high and you probably need some assistance from someone in health. If a fever lasts more than three days, then the infection doesn't seem to be curing and it's important to go in and get it checked out. And if there is ever a fever and the person has a stiff neck, so it's really tough to touch their chin down to their chest, if they're having convulsions, twitching or shaking, and this isn't just a little bit of shivering because they're cold, but the body is really, you know, doing some unusual motions. If the person's confused or have unusual behavior, so they don't seem to be themselves, they don't seem to understand what's going on, don't remember where they are, don't remember being sick, um, then you need to go in. Um, if they're having difficulty breathing, so either their breaths have gotten very, very quick or they're having a hard time getting air in, then you need to go to the doctor right away or call an ambulance. And the last thing is if they become really limp, kind of like a rag doll, so they are unable um, to stand up or in little kids, they just have no energy and their arms and legs kind of flail out to the side. Now the next respiratory tract infection is a cold or a runny nose, which most of us have numerous times throughout the year. Colds are caused by viruses. So again, this is something that is not cured with antibiotics. So no point in getting antibiotics for a cold. There are about 200 different kinds of viruses that cause colds every year. Even though we call them colds, they're actually different infections that come around. Kids usually get about eight to 10 colds a year. And as adults, we get a few less because we've had some of them before. So our bodies know how to fight off those viruses when they come around. Because usually once we've had one viral infection, our body and our immune system learns how to recognize it and it knows how to fight them off next time so that we don't get sick. Kids are a little bit younger, so they haven't been exposed to a lot of them before. So that's why they get them more often. Now, most people who have a cold will have a sore throat or a cough. And of course, one of the most common symptoms that comes along with a cold is the runny nose. Um, often, after about two or three days of having your cold, then you know what you're blowing in your tissue or your snot becomes kind of yellow green. And people know this because I think it's kind of human nature to open it up and take a peek at what's going on in there. Um, this is very normal. There are some people out there who think that as soon as something turns green, it automatically means it's a really bad infection and they run down to their doctor or their nurse practitioner to get some drugs. Sometimes this means that your body's actually healing. It means your immune system is working. So just because what you're blowing out of your nose is yellow or green doesn't mean that you have a problem. You just need to be patient. A normal cold lasts about 45, four to five days. So this is just about a week. So it can be kind of a pain. Um, the best treatment for a cold is lots of fluids. So again, lots of liquids. This can be, um, again, things like juice and water. Things that are nice and warm can be really calming. So tea, warm, um, warm water, things like that can be helpful. Getting lots of rest so that your body gets a chance to heal itself. Acetaminophen for fever. So again, the Tylenol or Tempra. And in little toddlers and babies, sometimes salt water drops can help if they're very, very congested. Uh, the next respiratory tract infection is the flu, which is what we call a virus called influenza. Now, I'm gonna start by saying that the flu is very different from the stomach flu. There actually is no such thing as the stomach flu. It is always another virus, so it's something like the Norwalk virus or uh, another kind of germ that's come around, the flu is something entirely different. If someone's having symptoms like diarrhea, stomach cramping, and that, it is not the flu, it's um, a different virus. So the flu that we're talking about is a respiratory tract infection. And in Canada, it goes around from about November or December until about April or May of every year. Symptoms of the flu, are a fever, so a lot of people's temperature will go up, they'll kind of have the chills, your muscles and body really ache, so you feel really sore, you just feel really down and out. Um, sore throats are quite common and a cough. Now a lot of people feel sick for about four to five days, but it's not uncommon for the flu to last up to three weeks. And again, because it's a virus, taking antibiotics will not help at all. 
So you just need to be very patient, take some medication that you get from the pharmacy for it. So go in and ask your pharmacist what will help um, and take lots of fluids. Another really good way to prevent the flu is with a flu shot every year. Now, I know everyone out there knows someone who has gotten a flu shot and says they got the flu from it. And this is actually impossible. The flu shot is killed bacteria or killed viruses, which means that there's nothing alive inside the flu shot. So if it gets put into your body, there is no way it can start making the flu to make you sick. What happens is that because we start giving flu shots in October or November, um, some people already have the flu virus in their body already when they get their flu shot and they just aren't having symptoms yet. So their symptoms start after they get their flu shot and they automatically link it back to the needle when actually what's happened is that it was just time for those viruses to start making the person sick. Because what the flu shot does is it helps you to helps to protect you from picking up the flu germ from when you get your shot for the next few months, but it cannot kill off the flu germs that are already in your system on that day. So if you already have the flu germ in your body the day you get the flu shot, it's not going to kill it off and you can still get the flu through the next few days. And this is what happens. It is possible after a flu shot for your arm to be a little bit stiff and sore. Some people get a little bit fevery for a day, but if you, again, take some acetaminophen, you will be fine. So it is impossible to get the flu from the flu shot. Uh, the next respiratory tract infection is a cough. And most coughs that adults get and kids get are caused by viral infections. So once again, this is something that antibiotics is not going to get rid of. Coughs can last a really long time with a viral infection and they can be start to get really frustrating because they just don't seem to be going away. In fact, about 45% of people still have a cough two weeks after they get sick. So this is about half of people still have the cough two weeks later and about a quarter of people still have their cough three weeks later. So it might feel like someone's had it for a very, very long time. Now a lot of people will go to their practitioner, so their doctor or their nurse practitioner, if they start coughing up stuff that's yellow or green. But once again, we know that just because something is yellow or green does not mean that it is an infection that requires medication. It just means that our body is fighting off infection. Now, if someone coughs up something that's red, that looks like blood, then it is important to go into the doctor and get it checked out. Sometimes a cough can indicate pneumonia, but usually people who have pneumonia get sick very, very fast and their symptoms are very strong. So they do not just have a cough, they have a whole bunch of other symptoms that are making them very sick very quickly. The next respiratory tract infection is a sore throat. And again, most sore throats are due to viruses. So um, they're not killed off by antibiotics. A lot of sore throats come as a symptom of either a cold or influenza or the flu. Sometimes a sore throat can be caused from a streptococcus bacteria, which is more common in the fall and winter. Um, so if you do have strep throat, which is one kind of throat infection that can be caused by a bacteria, then it's important to go into your doctor and get it checked out. But your doctor or your nurse practitioner is not going to have the, know that you have strep throat just by looking at you. If you ever go in, it's really important that they take a swab from your throat. So they'll use kind of like a long Q-tip and swab around your tonsils or where your tonsils used to be and put it on a slide and it'll be sent off to the lab. And at the lab, they'll figure out if you have strep throat. Just looking at your throat, it doesn't matter how good the doctor is or how long they've been practicing, they can't tell that that's what you have. Which means that it might take a couple days until they can call you back, tell you you have strep throat and give you antibiotics for it, if that's what you have. If it's not strep throat and it's not a bacteria, then once again, no antibiotics. Now, if someone has a sore throat and they have a cold or they have a sore throat, um, with a whole bunch of other symptoms, then we know that the sore throat's related to that and you don't need an antibiotic. Uh, the next respiratory tract infection is sinusitis. 
and this is a buildup of fluid in our sinuses. And our sinuses are the sacs that are below and above our eyes that are filled with air. So um, sinusitis is when those areas get infected. And sinusitis from a virus is about 200 times more common than from a bacteria. So once again, if you have sinusitis, taking antibiotics is not going to help for the most part because it's a viral infection. It's a really common thing to happen after a cold. So often you'll have all the symptoms of a cold and then everything else will start to feel better. Your headache, your fever, your chills, but your nose is still dripping and it doesn't seem to be going away. So this can mean that you have sinusitis. So your sinuses are a little bit infected. Again, there's nothing that you can do to cure it. You can take decongestants, which are medications that you can get from the pharmacy, and that might be a spray or a pill that you take that will help to dry up your sinuses. And what that does is it relieves your symptoms. So it makes your symptoms of sinusitis better, but it doesn't actually cure you. You just need time to run its course. Um, the next respiratory tract infection is an earache, and this is the most common reason that kids get antibiotics. A lot of adults, if they have an earache, they'll go to the doctor, and if the doctor doesn't prescribe them antibiotics, they are fine with it, but a lot of people push when their kids get sick that they want an antibiotic for their kids. So antibiotics for ear infections are very common. Kids are more prone to ear infections, so they get them more often than we do as adults because their eustachian tubes are very narrow and can get blocked during a cold. And our eustachian tubes are the tubes that go from our ear down and they connect with the back of the throat. And they're very, very small in kids because they haven't grown to adult size. So some kids have eustachian tubes that get so narrow um, that they have ear infections quite a bit and they actually have to have um, artificial tubes put in their ears for a while until their, their ones get wider naturally. Eustachian tubes often get blocked when people have a cold. So you can end up with um, some earache or it can feel kind of like you've got cotton in your ears because you can't hear what's going on outside. About 70 to 80% of ear infections get better without antibiotics. So again, three quarters of people, whether they're kids or they're adults, when they have an earache, if they just give it time and drink their warm fluids and use a decongestant to help get rid of some of the stuff clogging their ears, so again, a spray up the nose or a pill that they swallow, then it will help get rid of the symptoms and the ear infection or the earache will go away all on its own. In kids over the age of two, you can use some um, Tylenol if kids are having an earache. And um, having a little bit of fluid behind the eardrum is really common after a cold. Again, because those eustachian tubes have kind of clogged up. And in kids, about half of kids who get colds actually still have some fluid behind their ears even a month later. It doesn't mean that they have any symptoms of it. It's just that if the doctor actually used an otoscope and looked inside their ear at their eardrum, it will look kind of cloudy. Now, if kids do go to the doctor and the doctor looks in their ear and sees that there's some fluid behind the eardrum and the kid is not having any symptoms, so they have no earache, they're having no problems, then they don't need an antibiotic because the symptoms will go, well, there is no symptom and the uh, fluid will go away on its own. Um, now, question for people, what can cause ear infections in bottle-fed babies? Because babies that take the bottle are much more prone to ending up with earaches and ear infections than other babies. And the answer is um, that bottle-fed babies often get, they get laid down flat or they get propped up with a bottle. In mums, with mums who breastfeed, the baby always has to be held at the breast. And so the milk goes into their mouth and because their head's up a little bit, they swallow it down and it doesn't flow back. In babies that are laid flat to drink something with a bottle, they drink the bottle lying flat and the milk or water that they drink will drain into the back of their ears. Because again, those tubes that come from our ears are connected to the back of our throat. So if you lay flat, some of the fluid can drain back there. So in babies that are bottle fed, the milk that they're taking can drain back into their ears. And because milk can get quite sticky and has sugar in it, you'll end up with infections back there and earaches. 
So even in bottle fed babies, it is very, very important that babies never be laid flat because we don't want them to get ear infections and that they always get held when they get fed. You never want to lay a baby flat and you never want to prop them up.